Hello and welcome to this um, time-lapse demo. I've got some beautiful cherries here. This was such a joy to paint. The photo reference is from still life photographer Elena Tachulian. I'm so sorry if I said your name wrong, but she is incredible, honestly. You should go check her out on Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description below. Her work is just glorious. Um, I love um, how she captures objects. I love the lighting. So, of course, I had to do this um, piece with the cherries in like a silver. It looks like, like a kind of gravy jug. I'm working on pastel matte paper here. This is in the light blue colorway. The size of this, I can't remember. It's been a few paintings since I did this, but it's not big at all. It's quite a small piece. It's about, you know, 14 centimeters by 19 centimeters, something like that. Sorry, I can't remember exactly, but it's small. It's not a big piece at all. Um, so starting with the background, as always, using all my darks, we've got some dark grey, dark blue, and I've also added some like dark burgundy colours in there. Obviously, I'm really wanting the silver and the high chroma of these cherries to pop. And so like the reference photograph, um, it's got this beautiful dark background. That's exactly what I'm needing to put on the paper. Nice dark background so that our colors will just stand out and jump off the page. <clears throat> so I put a little bit of the table in there before I started the cherries. I just wanted to um, feel out the painting. Often I'll do this. Um, I wanted to see what kind of colors am I going to use for the cherry. And then I work a little bit on the leaf next to it. I seldom finish one part of the painting before I move on to the next. In the rare cases, it will be like the very back wall. So whatever you can see behind um, the silver, so like the wall, that, that is pretty much finished. Um, but the table definitely wasn't. Um, the cherries definitely aren't. I'll come back to those. That's just how I work. I, I don't tend to finish one piece of the painting. Um, yep, I just move on to what I fancy doing, really. And sometimes that will take me all over the place. But I do kind of like to keep it that I work left to right just because I'm right handed. So if I started on the right, um, it means. As I move along to the left, my hand could be smudging what I've already done. Of course, you can put a um, piece of glassine paper or copier paper down to stop that from smudging. But for me, it just makes sense to work from left to right. Um, like I said, this is genuinely how I work. There are times where obviously I break these little rules, these little ways of doing things. Um, it's so... What am I doing here? That was a little bit of Terry Ludwig that I put down. It's like a navy blue um, sort of color with a slight hint of purple um, that really worked really well for the shadowy parts of the silver. I'm using a mixture of pastel pencils as well as the chunky sticks in here. Like I said, I'm work this is pretty small and there's quite a lot of detail in that silver. So the pastel pencils really do come in quite handy. And again, in terms of the brand, I'm using a mixture of Caran d'Ache, Carbothello and Faber-Castell. I just grab whatever color um, I see. Um, which suits doesn't matter which brand that's particularly in or from what brand it's from not in so the pastel sticks lay down a lot more pigment than the pastel pencils um, but I use both because sometimes you can lay something chunky like from a pastel stick get a good saturation of color on there and kind of move the pastel into place with your pastel pencil and also for doing like these thin um, cherry twigs they're not twigs I don't know what they're called I can't think straight today let's blame the weather let's blame the English weather <laughs> but um because obviously you've got such a fine point on a pastel pencil, they are just really, really useful um, for getting fine points. Like over there, I was just um, mapping out the brightest part of this gravy jug and I used um, a white pastel pencil for that. And I keep 
bumping the camera. My husband has fixed it. The camera's now mounted on the wall. So there's no more of this jigger jigger jiggering around here. So in these cherries, they weren't just red cherries. I've used orange and I've used beautiful yellows from Sennelier. They've got such a wonderful range of vibrant, chromatic colors. If you're looking for a punch of color with your pastels, I would highly recommend Sennelier. They just, they don't fail. I mean, they are just amazing. Using a... Um, Within their range, I'm using the colors Vermilion, I'm using Helios Red, I'm using Chinese Vermilion, um, just to pump up. I mean, look at that. That is just bright and popping. And they are such a pleasure to use. And that yellow that I'm putting on, that's kind of like, um, how do I say, like a light orange or a dark yellow. I'm not sure how you want to say it. That is called bright yellow from Sennelier. And I just, oh, that was such a perfect color for inside these cherries. So uh, what I did is I held up, sometimes I will do that if I really want to um, get um, something accurate. So for the handle of this gravy jug, I wanted it to be really accurate. So I took, I'll take the reference photo and I put it as close to as where I'm painting. Just so my eyes have less distance to travel, I guess. I find it much, much easier to be able to see what's going on when my eyes have just so little distance to go. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. Um, but in the silver, you can see I've used blues, dark blues, blue violets, a bit of purple. Um, and I didn't copy every single reference, um, reflection that you can see in there. I just wanted to get the feel um, um, so so it's not exact it's not exact but I think I had enough information down to make it look like it was a really silver jug a really shiny reflective silver jug so I was happy with that I was happy and then um, just going around um, I use black and then often I'll go over the black with another color the reason is uh, black is just the darkest and I really want to get depth um, in my paintings. Um, I think it just makes everything look so much more 3D, which is what I'm after. That is that is one of the things I enjoy most, is taking a 2D surface and making it look 3D. It just it makes my heart happy. I love it. What can I say? So, um, yep, that's one of the reasons I love painting. I just When it comes alive, I just think it's just so much fun. And I do um, call um, what I'm doing now painting. I guess it's a mixture of drawing and painting. But for me, it's about the medium. It's about having pigments rather than leads. So for me, it's a pastel painting. So I refer to what I do as pasteling or painting or pastel painting. If you were uh, interested to know or got a bit confused when I said painting, when it obviously isn't acrylic or oils, um, I am holding pure pigment in my hand. And I don't have a brush, obviously I'm using my hands as the tool. So for me, that's um, that's why I call it painting. So if you have enjoyed this, I have a whole bunch of um, demos up on my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanted to check me out there. So if you've enjoyed this, if you could please like and subscribe. Apparently it really helps my channel. I'm not too clued up in all the analytics and how it actually works. But um, thank you for watching and bye for now till next time.